everyone welcome back to the Dally society today i've got one of my new favorite pairs of pants i've just finished sewing up two pairs and that's the helen's closet arden pants so stay tuned if you're interested in seeing how i went if you're new to my channel that's my dog meg she's a chocolate border collie she's the love of my life if you're one of my regular viewers i thought i'd better get her on screen so i've got a lot of fan mail for her so this week I've been a little bit busy. I have got a new top on here and I've got some pairs of pants to show you the uh, really popular new pattern from Helen's Closet, which is the Arden pants. There's two variations in those. So I will show you what I've done with them. And the top I have on before I go any further is a new make as well. This is the style like emery top. I've made it up in a beautiful art gallery uh, swan print that was a remnant from Wattle Hill Fabrics. Now, as this was a remnant, they don't have any more left in this particular art gallery print, but they do have other art gallery prints there, which we all know how beautiful they are. Um, the jersey in particular is a beautiful quality. Pop on over to their website at Waddle Hill, you will find some beautiful jerseys uh, for making great tops like this one. Now this uh, style like emery top was a really nice, easy make. I actually was quite surprised on the shoulder construction with the little puffed sleeves. It was actually done with little knife pleats. Normally you just do a little bit of a gather with this kind of a sleeve, but it's a bit of a different way of constructing, really easy. It gives that really defined puff sleeve and it sort of almost stands up on its own so i think it's really unique the way it's put together and i uh, love doing these with a twin stitched hem on the sleeves and on the bottom i will show you if you can see uh, up close i've done a twin stitched hem as well now i must let you all know i'm pretty sure a lot of you have already been using this for your jerseys when you are doing a twin stitched or a um, zigzagged hem sometimes you're fine with a lot of jerseys they tend to roll up when you press them they can get really annoying so i've found this fantastic heat bond stretch tape i will show you now i saw this on lindsay ray's instagram lindsay ray has the wonderful sew to grow pattern company if you haven't heard of her i suggest you pop over and have a look at her fantastic patterns she was actually using this herself and i popped on and asked her where she got it and it was actually from ebay um, there's a lot of sewing supplies on there and it is the same as the heat bond tape that you might have known to give that sort of a structure to um, any kind of woven fabrics. Well, this is actually the knit um, heat and bond, so it'll stretch with your garments. So, um, yeah, really uh, fantastic to use just to stabilise the hem and give that little bit of a stretch, a little bit of a structure as well. So highly recommend that. Meg is very busily chasing birds, so <laughs> she will see one fly over and she's off like a rocket. Of course, they just taunt her every day, but yeah, if you hear her running around, Sorry about that, a bit noisy. The Arden pants, they were fantastic to put together. I can highly recommend any of Helen's Closet patterns. I've just about got all of them. I think maybe there's one that I don't. I can't think of what one. Probably the Elliot top I haven't purchased yet, but that's on my list. Um, I love that as well. But her patterns are one of the leaders as far as instructions and diagrams go. She really does uh, tend to design a pattern with instructions for the absolute beginner right through to anyone that's in intermediate to advanced you'll find them a really enjoyable so um yeah they're a brilliant pair of pants i love them as far as comfort goes because at the moment i'm just loving anything elasticated around the waist especially when there's not too much ease but it's just the right amount of ease so you can actually dress them up quite easily as well but they're casual enough to be worn every day with a little pair of um, joggers, sandals, or even a pair of heels for going out. They are fantastic for all seasons because you can make them in such a huge variety of fabrics. So I have actually made two pairs. The first one I made in a gabardine twill. Now I had a fair bit of that fabric that I purchased just on a sale rack and I thought this is the perfect kind of pattern for that, for that fabric. It's got the right amount of weight and drape and I love the way they turned out. So I actually made the size 16. Uh, I found they were perfect for me, but I graded down to a 14 through the leg um, because I didn't want them to be overly wide. Um, they are more of a slim tapered in leg 
wouldn't call them actually slim, but they're not a wide leg at all. So they're in between, they're a perfect in between kind of variety of pants. We've got three different types of uh, leg finishing off. So if you wanted to put just a normal hem, you can do that. And if you wanted to put the elasticated cuff, you can do that as well. So I'll show you what I've done. For my size, I used around two meters of a 150, 138 width fabric. That was just the right amount. And it's the sort of thing that if you haven't got quite enough fabric, you can omit things like the back pockets. But I had just enough fabric for them and I thought they were a great feature to pop on the back. Uh, really easy to construct. I love the way the front angle pockets are done. I'm a huge fan of the angled slat style pockets. I think they're really lovely. But they give a lovely sleek look to a pattern. And I really love the look and the ease of them when you're wearing them. They're really comfortable pants to wear. So in construction, fantastic. Um, I had them done within a couple of hours. Um, and then the next pair, I think I did them over the course of a day and a half. the techniques that she uses especially for things like top stitching the inner leg seams together she gives a lot of structure and a lot of um, top stitching because you know sometimes you need that extra stitching in there to hold everything together because there's nothing worse than having a pair of pants that ends up splitting at those thigh seams I think it's really annoying after you put all that effort into it so she's really made sure that they're not going to do that um, and I think the wide elastic waistband is really really lovely to wear and also makes you feel a bit more put together. I think, um, yeah, you can always tuck a top in. So this gabardine I actually purchased from Lincraft a few months back when we were allowed to go to the shops. June, July, I think it was before the last lockdown happened. Um, they were on a clearance rack, so it's just a gabardine twill. I'm loving this wine color at the moment. I think it goes back with so many colors as well, and it can be great for an autumn wardrobe or even a spring wardrobe. It looks lovely with navy as well, so. Really love the color of these. For the bottom of the cuff, I opted for the elasticated version. I think it uh, really looks classy on. It'll look great with a little pair of boots, as I say, trainers or little sandals as well. And I really love the look. It gives it that casual vibe, but also the fabric gets in is a bit dressier. So you can really mix and match those two kinds of um, styles together to get more out of your wardrobe. And I think it would look perfect with a little bomber jacket or a little cropped kind of jacket as well to get you through those um, intermittent seasons. And the good thing about these pants is that you can wear a more of a cropped style top and get away with the lovely flat front that they do have as well. So um, a really comfortable pair of pants to wear. I will be living in these. I can recommend them. The next pair I made was a pinwheel corduroy in a, it's a, I think it's a deep navy. It's almost like a steel, it could be a charcoal. It's very, very hard to tell. It's in between one of those dark sort of color grays that's got a bit of blue in it. Um, it's a really good color as well to have as a staple if you're not wanting to wear black all the time and it sewed up beautifully in that as well so that nice sort of structured weight but not too heavy weight. So you've got to remember when you're doing a corduroy or a wide or a pinwheel cord you do have to watch the nap of the fabric so you must make sure that you're cutting your legs all the same direction so have all the legs facing one way or the other they have to all be the same way though things like pockets especially as well if you do the pockets the opposite way they will look a different color when you sew them together so that's a lesson i've learned from a previous pair of pants that i've made uh, from doing them trying to save fabric and doing the legs opposite ways you really have to make sure that you follow your nap of your fabric And the pinwheel, it really gathered up fine on the waistline. This one, I actually did the stitching through the elastic as well. She shows you how to do that. If you wanted to do three sets of stitches, you can just to keep the elastic down nice and flat. Um, when you have a thicker elastic, sometimes you can have it folding over, which can be quite annoying. So make sure that you yeah, you stitch it down. Um, the pockets, I think that she's given you a, like a little option to do a bar tack. If you don't have that option on your machine, you can just do a little small zigzag backwards and forwards just to give that stability to the pocket when you're putting your hand in it. This cuff, I just opted for a normal hemmed cuff. I didn't want to have the elastic with the cord. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to gather up 
So I think a pair of these pants would be beautiful in a chambray for those warmer seasons, um, a chambray or a light denim. I think things like um, a cotton drill it would be perfect or a cotton twill. Um, but I think it could also be made in something lighter weight for summer. So definitely things like your linen, your cotton linen blend or even your tensile linen blends. Things like tensile twills would be perfect as well because they have just enough drape and enough body with a pair of pants. They'd be brilliant for summer. really even think something like a rayon would work perfectly as well especially with those gathered elasticated uh, ankles I think that will look fantastic and it gives it that little bit of a boho edge um, almost like the genie style pants I think would look beautiful um, yeah so really quite a lot of options there with your fabric which makes it such an enjoyable sew because you do tend to get your money's worth out of a pattern when you can make it up in such a good variant of fabrics Helen's closet patterns do go from a size 0 to size 30 it also gives you a layering option when you're printing it out on your Adobe PDF and you can pick the layers that you want and things like that I normally pick will pick three sizes if I want to grade in and out that way it allows me the option to do that I quite often will find that I'm more of a 16 around the waist and 14 around the hips and bottom area and that way you can grade in and out and really tailor those pants to be exactly your size i think if you're one of those people that are you've quite frightened of making a pair of pants because of the work involved and the fitting issues this type of pant is probably the best to start off with because if you've got the elastic waist you've got quite a bit of ease through the middle and you can you know it allows you to get away with a bit more than if you would you know pop in something like with an invisible zip and trying to get that fit perfect that can be quite a lot of work for you to not actually know how you're going to cope with making them and also whether you're going to get the fit right so it can, can be quite daunting for a newbie sewist um, so these I think are a wonderful pair of pants uh, pattern to get started with to really get let you get your teeth into a pant pattern and I think it'll be an enjoyable sew for everybody and being at home at the moment this is the sort of thing I want to be wearing because it's, it's comfortable but it's also it's dressy enough to wear out and about so if you're like me and you're home in lockdown you're wanting a comfortable pair of pants go for the Ardens you won't regret it and I was just thinking to myself how wonderful would these pants look with a Gilbert shirt one of her new patterns is the Gilbert shirt a lot of people have made that uh, with a little tie at the waist I think it would look perfect together as an ensemble I think uh, if you buy three of Helen closet patterns I think you do get a discount off uh, like a bundle effect there so it's worth probably buying a couple of patterns as one unit and then you will uh, receive a discount and be able to wear it together I also think it looked fantastic with her Ashton top as well one of my most worn tops if you haven't seen my most worn top episode I will link that above for you to see and also one of her skirts was on my most worn skirts the donovan skirt is a fantastic sew as well i love that helen incorporates comfort and style into her patterns because we all love an elastic waistband i know a lot of you do you're like myself but you also want to have a stylish looking garment so i think yeah, she's really nailed it with her with her pattern drafting this time and as i say her instructions are fantastic and i know that because one of my daughters the oldest one phoebe she actually tackled a pair of these pants the Arden pants herself she it was her first pair of pants and i just thought wow well, she's really getting her teeth into some good patterns here this is a perfect way to start off she actually did a check pair of pants which i thought wow for a first beginner attempt i probably wouldn't be attempting checks because you've got to make sure you've got that pattern matching up but she did quite a good job and i think for her yeah for her first pair of pants pattern this is the perfect one to go for I have heard a few people saying that these are quite a generous fit. I would probably disagree. I think they are more onto the fitted side, especially around the middle. They haven't got a huge amount of ease through the middle. So I would be wary of that. I would probably stick to your measurements and look at the finished garment measurements, especially with your waist and your elastic. It'll give you a finished measurement. That way you can see the perfect option for yourself. And I know with her Winslow collots, they are really roomy when they've um, got the elasticated waist as well, but they're a different style collot pant. They do have a lot more ease than these. So definitely be wary of that. Check your measurements, check your finished garment measurements and really um, try and narrow in on that exact fit that you need. I always say it's better to go up a little bit and take it in than to have them too firm and not be able to let them out at all. I think that way, you've, um, especially when you're making a 12 for the first pair, I think it's great to be able to you know, tailor in those bits and pieces that you know for next time when you're making it with your nice fabric that you know you're going to be getting a proper fitting garment i hope that's given you that little bit of inspiration to go and make a pair of pants especially if you're a newbie sewers to go and tackle the 
Arden pants because they are fantastic for a beginner. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit that little notification bell as well to be alerted to my new episodes. That way you'll never miss out. We'll see you again soon for a new episode. Bye for now.